Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Pastor Steve Kaib. I'm the pastor here at Maple Grove. And today we're mourning the loss of a friend, a mom, a wife, a great If you want to just keep this on, that's fine. I'll stay close to the pulpit. But thank you so much for being here. As, a, as the family and I talked uh, for quite a while, we reminisced about a lot of the fun and wonderful things that Shirley was and what she was all about and her life's experiences, and they were many from what I've heard. And I think that she would want us to kind of celebrate that life that she had. So why don't we start, if you would, please take your little paper that uh, the ushers gave you, and we'll start with the Lord's Prayer. If you would rise, and we'll all say that together, please, the Lord's Prayer together. Some of you just said, well, I just got comfortable. Why are you making me stand? I promise I'm not making you stand because it's going to be a long service. You can guarantee that. So let's say this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I promise that's probably the most pain that you'll go through today. So, Let me read her obituary uh, just so that we're all kind of on the same page. Shirley J. Benner, 85, of Ashland, passed away Friday, January 7, 2022, in Good Shepherd Skilled Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. She was born December 1, 1936, in Ashland, the daughter of the late Clyde and Lois Gale Knee Piper Schooner, Schoonover. Shirley graduated from Ashland High School, class of 55. She married the love of her life, George E. Benner, on June 3, 1955. Throughout her life, she worked in various roles, but mostly in property management while living in Florida. She was a devoted member of Maple Grove Church of the Brethren, Throughout her life, she enjoyed sewing, but most of all, spending time with her family, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She is survived by two daughters, Nancy and Donald Bassett of Nankin, and Cheryl and Bob Wallace of Ashland, one son, Lawrence and Susan Benner of Ashland, four grandchildren, Jenny and John Thompson, Mandy S. and Brandon Heilman, Vanessa Wallace and Justin Wallace, uh, 14 great-grandchildren, and this is where I'm not very hooked on phonics, so forgive me if I butcher your name. A Perrin and Ariona Thompson, uh, Damien and Emily and Ian Peck, Caden, Guinevere, Gabriel, Kiera, Jeremiah, Joanna, this is the one right here. Rosalia, Rosalia Riley, uh, Ariella Heilman, and three sisters, Eleanor uh, Martin of Ashland, Karen Gibbs of Ashland, and Kay and Howard Staggerwald of Ashland, and one sister-in-law, Janet uh, Schoonover of Erie, Michigan. In addition to her father, Shirley is... Uh, uh, preceded by and death by her mother, Laura, uh, Lois Gale Williams Staggerwall, Shirley's husband of 34 years, George E. Benner, who passed away on February 6, 1990, and three brothers, Paul and Shirley, Donald and Teresa, and Glenn Schoonover. At this time, uh, from what I can assume, uh, Shirley really enjoyed music, and as they were going through and, and discussing different things, they uh, asked their mom, you know, mom, what are some of the songs that you really, really, really like? And they listed about 20 songs, and 
for the prelude, if you were listening to some of those songs, those were all some of her favorites. Uh, but they chose the very three very most favorite songs, and we're going to sing them today. Uh, they will be on your overhead. So if you'd like to sing them with us, the first one is In the Garden, and this is one of her all-time favorite songs. We'll sing the first verse and the second verse together, please. <clears throat> I come to the garden of turn back to our little half sheet of paper. I won't have you stand on this one, but let's uh, quote the 23rd Psalm together, if you would, please. You ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, many years ago, uh, people used to use the term or the idea uh, servant of the Lord. So they would call someone, oh, servant of the Lord, Billy. And they would kind of call them that as part of their name. And, you know, it's, it's funny that that is exactly what Shirley was. As we talked and talked about all the different things that Shirley did, the one word that kept coming to my mind is she was a servant. She loved to serve people. She loved to help people and to teach people. And she really enjoyed teaching her grandkids and her great-grandkids how to make tents, you know, the forts that little boys always uh, drape uh, the blankets over chairs and couches and all of that. She really enjoyed helping them learn how to make those things. She also, from what I've heard, served the Lord in a mighty way. She did a lot of things for our church. She did a lot of things uh, as a missionary and as a helper all throughout her life. In fact, uh, even when she was uh, just first married and, and different things, she went out and she served. And because of that, um, I would say that 
the servant of the Lord idea is really prominent in her life. One of the stories that they told me was uh, she was in the little farmhouse and they had this little farm that they worked pretty hard at. And they said, uh, you know, one of the remembrances that we really had with mom was after all of the chores were done and we had done all the working and we were playing and things, mom would start to wash the dishes. And as she washed the dishes, she sang this song. And this song, I remember as a young man, as a little boy, actually, it's kind of a fun song. And if you know this song, you'll understand why she would enjoy, as she does these dishes, she's singing this song. So I'm going to ask you to sing this song with us. It's called The Church of the Wildwood. Uh, you might know it as the Little Brown Church song. So if you know this song, sing it with us. Uh, and on the chorus, I think that's where you'll hear why she probably sang this so often with, while she did the dishes. So let's sing this together. <clears throat> There's a church in the valley by the wildwood, no lovelier spot. I'm trying to think what that would be like to have her sing that song as she's washing dishes and everything. There's a poem that I'd like to share with you. It just is entitled, Her Journey's Just Begun. It's by Helen Brenneman. Here's what it says. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no more days and years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those that she touched for nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved very much. I want you to know that the Bible tells us a tremendous amount about Jesus facing death and sorrow and sadness. While he was on the cross dying, he saw the pain in his mom's eyes. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at his very good friend, John, and gave his mother to John and said, now you will be her son and he will be, well, he will be your son and you will be his mother. Another time when Jesus heard about his cousin, another John, John the Baptist, he heard about his, his cousin's death and the Bible says that Jesus wanted to be alone. When Jesus saw a widow mourning for her son's death, the Bible says that Jesus stopped the procession of the, the, the funeral procession. 
and he touched the young man and, and healed him and he came back to life again because he was so sorry for that mom that she had lost her son. And so he gave him back to the mother. When Jesus' friend Lazarus died, the Bible said that Jesus saw the crowds mourning. And the Bible says in John that Jesus also wept. He wept because he was so sorrowful for the crowds that had lost his good friend Lazarus. So it's a pretty accurate statement to say that Jesus was very familiar with death and, and sadness. In 1 Corinthians 15, 21, it says that God created our world without death. In the beginning, there was no death. There wasn't sadness. But because of Adam and Eve and how they sinned and they brought sin into the world, they brought death also into the world because uh, Romans 6, 23 says, for the, the punishment of sin, which started from Adam and Eve, is, is death. In Hebrews 9, 27, it says this, that it's appointed unto mankind, each person, that there would be death. Once to die, and then there was judgment. In James 4, 14, it's, it's such a puzzling verse. It says that our lives here on earth are like a, a vapor. They're here today and, and gone tomorrow. And that is so true, you know. No matter how long someone might live, it never seems like it's long enough. Our lives are seeming to be very short. And I know our time with Shirley seems like, oh, I wish we could have spent more time, more quality time and, and more time to talk and reminisce and share our love for one another. But listen to what God has planned for us, what God has in store for each one of us, 1 Corinthians 2.9 says this, that eye has not seen and nor ear has heard nor mind can even comprehend the amazing and wonderful things which God has prepared for those who love him. And then I love this verse. It's, it's such a, a great verse. It gives us comfort. It's, it's found in Revelation 21 verse 4 and it says, that he will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more pain and no more death. Isaiah said it this way. He said that the mourning and the crying and the pain, the old order of things will be no more. Boy, wouldn't that be a great thing? When there will be no more death and no more pain and no more suffering and no more sadness because of those that we love have passed on. You know, I think if, if Shirley was to come back and, and share with us some wisdom of hers, I think she would want us to know a couple of things. I, I think she would first of all want us to know that, that heaven is real. If she came back, she would first of all, I think she would say, hey, heaven is a real place. Real people go there. It's true. Heaven is a real place. I think this, the second thing that she would want us to know is that there is really a real way to get to heaven. You know, there's, there's that old saying that all roads lead to heaven. And I don't know if Shirley would agree with that. She would say, Jesus is there and there's a real way to get there. In fact, the Bible is clear that Jesus said, I was crucified for your benefit. I was crucified to take away all of mankind's sins. And Acts 16.31 says this, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So I think she would want us to know that heaven is a real place and there is a real way to get to heaven. And I think she would want us she would want you to know for sure that you could go there too. You know, years ago, I believe that Shirley came to that understanding. That she understood that heaven is real and that someone can go there, people can go there. And I think she wanted to make that a reality in her own life. 
And so as she studied the Bible and as she came to church and came to this church for many, many years, she came to a realization that it's really kind of a simple matter. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, surely realized she had to admit that she had sin in her life too. I think her family would be the first to tell you Shirley wasn't perfect, was she? No. No, she wasn't perfect. To be honest, none of us are. And so Shirley had to come to a time in her life where she admitted that she had a sin issue, as we all do. But she also came to a place where she, B, believed that Jesus died on the cross for her sin issue. And so she asked Jesus to take care of her sin problem. That's the B part. And then the C part is she called on him. Just like I'm talking with you, she called on God. She prayed to him. And she talked to him and called on him and asked him to save her from her sin problem. You know, it is really as easy as A, B, C. In fact, 1 John 5.13 says this, These things have I written unto you that you can know for sure that you have eternal life. Years ago, God touched Shirley's life. He brought her to a point where she saw a need for salvation. And one of Shirley's very favorite songs of all time was, He Touched Me. And so I want to I close with that song, He Touched Me. It's, it's going to be up on here. And if you would, sing this with me. Uh, and as we sing this, I want you to think about Shirley. I want you to think about how God came into her life and changed her. He touched her in a mighty way and saved her. We all know she probably still did some wrong things, as we all do. But at the end of life, she had this hope that one day she'd see her Lord and Savior again. And we can have that hope also. I think the biggest thing Shirley would want if she came back is she would want you also to know that you have that chance to have eternal life too. Let me ask you before we sing this song, have you had a, a time in your life when Jesus has touched you? When you have given him an opportunity to say, Jesus, I do know that I have sinned. Jesus, but I believe that you died on the cross for me, and I also want to call on you and ask you. As we sing this song, maybe you should kind of think about that so that one day you know for sure that you have heaven also, like Shirley did. And one day you'll be able to see her in heaven when your time is up and we're doing a service for you. So let's sing that song together. He touched me.
thank you so much for the life of Shirley. Lord, she had a powerful life, Lord, plenty of experiences and wonders, seeing all kinds of different things and different people. And Lord, she served. She served the people that she loved. She served those around this country. And Lord, she served you. So today, Lord, we celebrate her life. Today, Lord, we also pray for the family and the friends that are around her. Because, Lord, she, in her passing, has left a hole in our hearts. Lord, we are mourning her loss because it's our loss. Lord, I pray that you would comfort each and every person here. Lord, I pray that we would be reminded of all the fun things that Shirley did and, and said and all that she was about. Lord, help us to have good memories about this loved one. God, thank you so much that you have made a way to heaven. And in fact, Lord, you wrote about it so that we can know for sure that our home could be heaven. So, Lord, our request is that one day we would be able to say hello again to this one that we loved, Shirley. God, I pray that you would allow that to happen. Thank you so much for the hope that you've given each and every one of us. We love you so much in your precious and holy name. Amen. All right. So we are going to go ahead and exit. And after uh, everyone has exited, there is some food and uh, refreshments in the fellowship hall for you. You're very welcome uh, to come and join with us and celebrate uh, a little bit longer with Shirley. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.